Okay, we're all booted up now. We're going to click on VM at the top to make sure that our um, access uh, or our ad wireless adapter is connected, which down over here it says Rail Link is, is connected. It's got the check mark next to it. If it's your first time running this, you're going to need to compile the drivers uh, for your wireless adapter. It's really easy though. You just click down here and then under miscellaneous you just click on compile RT2570 module if that's the card you have obviously. Um, once it's done compiling that then you'd click on RT2570 and you click start. Brings up this window, loads it up and that gets your uh, drivers loaded and get your wireless adapter ready to use. The tool we're going to use to crack the access point is the AeroScript tool. So we're going to load that up. First option, it select, asks you to select which adapter. So option one is the only one I have. Okay, so that brings up your main menu. First thing we're going to do is scan for access points. And I'm not going to choose any filters, option one. Uh, I'm just going to go channel hopping to just scan through all the channels. Channel hopping uh, might not get you as, as much detail uh, to see, you know, what network's the strongest and see how many packets it's transferring, but it will give you a brighter, a wider range of uh, your, all your different networks in your area. The one that I own and that we're going to tag here is called uh, Super Secure. It's got 128 bit encryption on it. So now that it's found it, noting the uh, wireless MAC address there, ending with A1, I'm just going to click on my black window here and hit Control C to load out of that. The next option we're going to select is the number option two, select target. And the first target we have is the um, super secure target. So that's the one we're going to pick. It's option one, enter. Now it's asking you, do you want to select a client? And right now we didn't see any clients attached, so I'm going to select option three to try to detect some clients. So right now it's sending out a deauthorization packet to everyone that's connected and what it does is it causes your other wireless clients that you just deauthorized to reauthorize themselves so you can see them. So up at the top, and this that's our access point with the ESSID super secure and underneath is the list of clients, okay? So this is saying that this adapter station is connected to the uh, MAC address A1 or F8A1. Let's see it matches up. This is this is our client's MAC address right here. So we got that good. What we're going to do is say one yes, someone is associated. And it says it listed there um, their MAC address. So you select option one to um, put that in. Now it doesn't always show you the MAC address right away so it's a good thing just to write that MAC address down and if you need to enter the MAC address of the client manually what you do is you do option 2 select again and you select your network again super secure and instead of check checking option 3 you check option 4 it says yes show me the clients and you can select option 2 to manually enter in that MAC address and that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now we got our MAC address entered in there. And the attack we're going to do is kind of, it, it attempts to emulate as if we were that particular client. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change our MAC address with option 12 and it says change MAC address to the client MAC and that's option two. We're going to select that. So now it's changing the MAC, you know, the MAC address of our uh, wireless adapter. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to close out that window and I'm going to open up an attack window, attack the target, and then it lists out the different options, the different type of attack. The attack we're going to do here is number five, the a ARP request. It keeps on sending a uh, ARP requests over and over and over and the automatic option that's option five. 
So now it loads up a couple windows. And right here it's saying how many packets that it's read. And it says that it's got zero, zero of these uh, ARP requests. To initiate this, uh, to cause you know a lot of data traffic, because that's what we need up here, is we need this data to be flowing quickly to get enough packets so we can actually attempt to crack it. What we're going to do is we're going to do a deauthorization or cause all the targets to be deauthorized from the access point. That way, it'll uh, allow us to to reinitiate and request a, do an ARP request. So I'm going to select the option for everybody one. And right now it's it's sending out those deauthorization packets. And so here we go. Now uh, the uh, data packets you can see are flying. You can see that our ARP requests are flying. Uh, packets sent are flying. It just keeps on sending these ARP requests over and over and over. And uh, the information we get back from the uh, from the access point is uh, saved in a, in a text file that we're going to use to crack the uh, web encryption key. So this is a 128-bit uh, encryption key, so I'm going to wait till there's about 50,000 packets in order to run the crack program, but it should take probably about a minute at this rate. Uh, we're on a 54 megabit connection, so we can do this relatively quickly. Um, I'm going to pause the recording until we have enough packets. Okay, we've almost got about 50,000 packets. And we've got down here, you can see, we've read uh, 65,000 packets and we've got like 30,000 ARP requests. So I think we've got enough to, to uh, attempt to do the crack. The more packets you have, the faster we can crack the uh, encryption key. So I'm just going to select option four to run the crack. And then it gives you uh, your four different WP cracking options. I'm going to select option 2 to do the standard uh, crack. Brings up a new window. I think I might have hit the wrong key there. We're going to do option 2, the standard. Okay, here we go. All right, well, it's it's done. It uh, we used 76,000 IVs to find the uh, password, so we had a lot of them. And there is our 128-bit encryption key right there. And it, you know, it found that in, a, in about nine minutes. So that was pretty quick. I mean, we could probably have done it faster, but uh, I wanted to make sure it was gonna take the first time. But uh, that's it.